I am re-recording today's Facebook Live because there were some issues with Facebook's sound and it was very annoying. So I decided to re-record this on a different platform which we will um, save on our Facebook page. I'm going to wear my headset just in case. Um, so, well, welcome today. Uh, I am going to talk about immunity uh, in uh, today's world. And uh, first of all, just welcome to our Starkle Nutrition uh, Nutrition Community Hour. This is our third week of broadcasting this, and we are um, trying to keep this up to provide our community with uh, good information that's useful right now in today's world. So if you have any topics that you think would be interesting to talk about, uh, please go ahead and send us an email or post a comment down below and we will take note and try to get that on our schedule. Uh, we have been doing them weekly. This is our third week. Um, and I will be referring to the previous two weeks during uh, my talk today. If you have any questions, please do type them in the comment section and I'd be happy to run over them. Um, so Starkle Nutrition, we are a nutrition and mental health clinic in the University District in Seattle, Washington. Uh, we see we have nine nine nutritionists, uh, some of which are also mental health counselors. And we see clients on anything from general wellness, um, cholesterol issues, diabetes or high blood blood sugar, high blood pressure to more complicated situations like autoimmune disease, gastrointestinal issues, oncology and brain health nutrition. Um, I'm the clinic owner. Uh, my name is Julie Starkle and I've been seeing clients for about 12 years and I focus on optimal wellness uh, in autoimmune conditions and gastrointestinal issues. And I'm going to toot my own horn for a second. Uh, this is a new textbook that just came out. It's called Integrative and Functional Medical Nutrition Therapy. Um, the editors, Diana Nolan, Jeannie Drisco, and Lee Wagner. I want to give a shout out to Diana, who's the lead editor on this. This is a tome. It weighs eight and a half pounds, and I actually weighed it. Um, my chapter is on respiratory nutrition, which is very pertinent to today's talk. And I'm only like a little sliver of 60 or 70 pages in this whole book. So wanted to give a little shout out to that for the geeks in the world who really want a good textbook. Um, so I want to sort of give an outline of for today. Um, rather than just straight lecture, I will talk a little and then check for questions, talk a little bit about questions. Since this is a re-recording, I will take some questions that happened during the live when we were having sound issues, and uh, I will interject those just so you know what people were asking. And then um, if you have any others and you happen to be coming across this live stream, please put them in the comment section. Uh, this should last, I'm probably gonna do an abbreviated version, um, but it'll probably last about 30 minutes or so. So without further ado, um, I'm going to jump in. Oh, just one technical issue. I have to jump between a couple screens, so I apologize if I'm not looking at you at every moment. I'm trying to handle and figure out this technology. It's the first time I've ever done this, so. All right, um, just checking things out. All right, we're all good. So, uh, you know, immunity. Immunity is an interesting thing. Our immune system is uh, hopefully innate. A lot of it is built by the time we're two and we just have to maintain it and nourish it over the course of our life. And so there are some keystone uh, um, things, <laughs> lack of a better word, that we need to manage while we are um, living and day-to-day -day life that help us with our immune immunity. So I will go through those first. Um, I would say it's under the category of good healthy diet and lifestyle. And then I'm going to go into some additional immunity supporting options like supplements. And then we'll take any questions uh, throughout and then uh, I'll summarize and we'll be done. So a uh, good healthy diet and lifestyle, that might mean a lot to different people, but for me there are five cornerstones to that. The first is to um, manage blood sugar. Now I won't get too much into details about this 
uh, but overall it means eating frequently um, so that you're not too hungry, so not you know too long between meals, having protein with every meal and snack, and having a good uh, good uh, assembly of food. So you know balance. We want vegetables, we want protein, and a small amount of other fun stuff. So in order to get more information, Heather Brummer, one of my colleagues at Starkle Nutrition, she uh, did a Facebook Live on this topic two weeks ago. So uh, it was like mid-April and it is on our Facebook page. So you can watch that for much more detail. All right, so our first cornerstone is eat to manage your blood sugar. Uh, second is sleep. And it just so happens that last week's Facebook Live, Rihanna Giusti, my colleague, did a whole Facebook Live on sleep for immunity. So I think that's a really good watch and uh, check that out on Facebook on our page. Our third cornerstone is drink plenty of water. Uh, obviously not caffeinated because that dehydrates us. Even though it's fluid, it causes us to go to the bathroom more. Um, but rather things like water, herbal teas, um, mineral water, those kinds of things. Um, fourth, eat plenty of vegetables. If you're looking at your meal for your that you're sitting down to, over half should be vegetables. And this is because we get the majority of our nutrients through vegetables. And without all those nutrients, we can't expect to maintain our immune system. And then lastly is exercise. I'm not talking about marathons or anything like that, but just take wherever you are <clears throat> and up at a notch. So if you're walking from the kitchen to the couch, great. Uh, maybe we extend that to walking around the block. Anyway, you just want to increase your exercise so that it is daily. It gets your heart rate going just a little bit every day, moves those muscles. Stretching is a great addition. Um, nothing too strenuous, but our body does need to move. We are designed to move. So those are the five um, basic pillars that make up the foundation for good health in general, but including immunity. So we really have to take care of our health. And this is one way that, um, you know, this getting a good firm foundation is a good way, just like building a house. All right, so let's move on. Uh, first, I'm going to check and see if there are any questions. Um, let's see, we had some about I think these would be appropriate for a little bit later on. Okay, I will get back to those in a moment. So let's move on to, if you wanna take up uh, your supporting your immune system, taking it up a little bit higher or take it up a notch, um, I would suggest supplements. Now just a couple things about supplements. Um, you know, we don't get as much nutrition from our food as we used to. We used to get a, a lot more for a couple different reasons. One is our soil was better. You know, modern farming techniques really deplete the soils of important nutrients um, like minerals and vitamins aren't really, but minerals. Fashion sustainable style of farming would have you turn under uh, like the old plants and also grow winter cover crops that would fix nutrients into the soil. And that isn't done as often anymore. Oh, also the rotation of crops. So you never grow uh, the same crop in the same place forever. You have to rotate it to give the soil a break and to nourish the soil, um, bringing in things like manure. And so having a really good ecosystem and a lot of smaller farms, um, you know, that tend to be more organic and go in that direction. They are doing this to provide the best possible produce uh, available. So anyway, most of us aren't getting that. So that's one reason why our food has fewer nutrients. Um, the second is there's a difference between organic or sustainably grown and regular agriculture and that the plants uh, that are sustainably grown don't really have to work very hard and when a plant works harder it produces more nutrients. So those that are grown sustainably might not have all the fertilizers and the perfect watering situation all the time. So we uh, then have to look at what a plant goes through to survive during inclement weather or difficult 
a difficult time. And what it does is produce chemicals that are, in fact, nutrients for us and animals. Um, the other concept about supplements I wanted to bring up is the concept of insufficiency versus deficiency. So if you are deficient in a vitamin, you definitely don't have enough and you're going to start showing symptoms of severe disease or problems, right? Deficiency is the problems have really started. Then there's optimal, way over on this end. Optimal means you have the optimal amount of nutrients to make all of your body's functions work just smoothly. In the middle, there's that gray area, and that could be insufficiency. So it's not optimal. So maybe you're plugging along, but then you don't have enough vitamin whatever to make this certain function work. It's going to work at a sort of like slower pace or it's not going to do everything it can possibly do. Over time, that could be called long latency nutritional insufficiency. And this could lead to problems down the road. This is where nutrition is the long game. Having optimal nutrition your whole life allows your body to function well and not get into any sort of deficit over time. So we, op we choose and we shoot for optimal health. So in order to get optimal amounts of nutrients, sometimes supplements are necessary. Um, I'm not going to talk about dosages. I think it's better if you talk to your healthcare provider or your nutritionist or come see one of us at our clinic to talk about what uh, is the appropriate amount of dosing for you. All right, so let's get into it. Um, I'm going to go check questions again. Let's see if we have anything else. I know this wasn't announced because I was doing a Facebook Live at 12.30 and now it's 2 o'clock and um, we decided to re-record it because the sound was so bad. So I don't expect to have many attendees at this time. So vitamin A. Um, this is not to be confused with beta carotene, which is a pro-vitamin A. Vitamin A is the animal form. Uh, it's the form that we is closest to the one that we use in our body. So vitamin A is a, is available in certain foods like fish or dairy or cap, um, caviar, yeah, meats, liver. Um, but we don't always get enough through our food, as I mentioned. Um, most Americans get, you know, they're out of the deficient range. We were not typically deficient in vitamin A. However, we might still be insufficient. We're not optimal. Um, so what does vitamin A do for us with immunity, particularly immunity for uh, the respiratory system, you know, speaking from the time of coronavirus and COVID. So it helps maintain proper cell integrity and helps us fight off infections. Um, those who smoke often are deficient in vitamin A and the concentration is lower. So having a little extra vitamin A in your life is definitely going to be helpful, protective, and it even helps fight against infections. Um, I'm not saying that it prevents disease, but it might help your body be able to fight it off a little bit better than the next person's. And then as far as repair, it helps decrease scarring of the lungs. Um, and one of the things that we know that COVID does is that it does scar the lungs and it takes a very long time to recover. So this could be part of a great recovery. Um, all right, let's talk about a couple of things you want to be careful with vitamin A. You don't want to take uh, large doses of vitamin, vitamin A long term. This could result in a just, you know, an upper, like an, uh, over our upper level of vitamin A and having a, possibly a toxicity level. It, it would probably take a lot to get there, but we just want to make sure. And high doses of vitamin A is not something that you want when you're pregnant. You want a sufficient vitamin A, but not a high dose. Um, the other thing you want to watch out for is sun. Uh, it makes it may make your skin more photosensitive. So meaning wear more extra sunscreen, um, clothing, etc. All right. Let's move on to vitamin C. So vitamin C is a super powerful antioxidant. Uh, it helps decrease oxidative damage. So oxidative damage is like rust on your cells. Your cells get like eaten away by free radicals and vitamin C can come and repair it. And vitamin C not only can do that on its own, but it can also um, 
cause other molecules that are repairers to regenerate. So it regenerates other molecules that are repair molecules. It's also a part of collagen. And collagen is in our lungs, and we need it to have the lungs be elastic so that they can breathe. It's also in skin, so collagen can be great for skin, too. Uh, it's in citrus fruits, right, tomatoes, and other fruits and vegetables, and we most of us know that. However, a lot of times for better protection, uh, we recommend taking extra vitamin C. Um, too much vitamin C can cause loose stools. That's pretty much the worst of it. Um, so watch out for that as a side effect, but it takes quite a lot. Everyone's a little different, but if your body needs it, it will take more and more and more. So during the cold and flu season, um, or if you have allergies to cats or the environment or anything like I do, vitamin C is really helpful and protective. Um, it uh, also diminishes the oxidative attack on the actual nuclear material. So the nucleus is where the DNA is of the cell. Uh, if you smoke, you wanna take a little extra vitamin C because smoking depletes it. One uh, ca caveat with vitamin C is it helps your body absorb iron. So if you uh, eat a vitamin C with an iron rich food like meat or spinach, it's gonna double your absorption of iron, which is a great thing if you're low in iron. But some people who might be high in iron should be careful and never take it with a high iron food um, and to even be careful on the amount of vitamin C in general. Uh, okay, moving on to vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is a workhorse. Uh, it is a pro-hormone, so it is actually can turn into, like parts of it contribute to hormones in our body. Um, we can find it in eggs, also liver, Oh, and if anybody wants a great liver pate recipe, I've got one. It's delicious. I'm not a big liver fan, but I love this. Um, they also add vitamin D2 to fortified milk. And uh, D2 is not the active form of vitamin D. It is uh, the inactive form. And um, our body needs to convert it to vitamin D3, which some of us don't do very well. It requires some genes that we might not have in full effect, uh, we might have a mutation, which it, it, there's a common mutation. So most supplements are vitamin D3, which is the active form. Uh, vitamin D overall enhances our immune systems and it's a very important vitamin for that reason. Um, it reduces viral growth and it can help with the lung function and um, improved immunity. It actually can um, reduce upper respiratory infections as well. So it's a workhorse. Um, it's also an anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's very helpful for asthma, chronic lung issues. Um, so for moms to be taking vitamin D, it helps um, decrease the likelihood of your child getting asthma. So really great vitamin to have in your daily arsenal. All right, let's move on to minerals. So I'm gonna talk about zinc. Uh, first, zinc is probably the best one that has antiviral properties against viruses, right? Um, it's in oysters, red meats, poultry, cashews, chickpeas. It's in proteins. Zinc is part of the protein structure. So uh, many times there's a, a good amount of vitamin D if you get a good multivitamin mineral supplement. Um, but sometimes we need a little bit extra and you don't want to take it too much too long because it does compete for absorption with copper. And uh, so you want to take it maybe three times a week in the cold and flu season. And I would check with your healthcare provider or nutritionist, uh, someone who knows enough about vitamins, minerals to really understand dosing and to help you out with your needs. There are tests that test for your levels of all of these nutrients. And so sometimes that's called for to make sure you're not getting too much of one or you need more extra of another. Um, and then back to zinc competing with copper. So if zinc is too high in your diet, it will prevent copper from getting absorbed. We don't need much copper at all, um, but we do need some. And uh, so copper's in chocolate. So I find that really helpful. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to, you know, stop your zinc, just eat more chocolate. Um, 
All right, other minerals, selenium, magnesium, iodine, and boron are all helpful for uh, antiviral properties and help the body's immune system be able to be stronger against an attack. Uh, all right, let's move on to phytonutrients. So phytonutrients mean plant-based nutrients. And there are two top ones that I want to talk about a little bit more. And then I'll just list off a couple others. Curcumin and curcuminoids come from turmeric. Turmeric is a spice that we see typically in Indian food and some other regions near there. It's yellow. It stains, um, but it's delicious. Um, and then curcumin is is one of the active constituents. And the best way to take turmeric is in the whole. So taking turmeric as a whole, but then with extra curcumin, which is the active constituents. Um, turmeric on its own, if you take too much, it starts to give you tummy issues. And generally turmeric, the spice on its own, does not have enough curcumins in it in the, its normal state to have a therapeutic effect. So it's basically best to have turmeric, like in your capsule has turmeric and extra amounts of curcumin. So curcumin has been shown to reduce inflammation and decrease the viral activity for COVID-19. There's actually been some quick research on that. So that's very encouraging. Uh, it also limits scarring of the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, anywhere where fibrosis happens. Um, so it's a, it's a really important phytonutrient to consider uh, during these times. Um, you know, in any of these things, they're anti-inflammatory. So taking them now gives your body a better place to start with to uh, fight against anything. Right? I'm not just talking about the coronavirus or any particular strain of a virus or bacteria. I'm just talking about making your body more resistant in general. All right, moving on. The second of the, my top two phytonutrients is quercetin. So quercetin is in the family of flavonoids. It's called a flavanol. Um, there's many of them. You've heard of the carotenes and uh, lycopene and these are all these plant nutrients. And the best sources of them are apples and berries, capers, onions, tomatoes, kale, broccoli, nuts, buckwheat, and tea. So quercetin is uh, a great anti-inflammatory and it can actually help when there is a flare-up of inflammation, as can curcumin, um, kind of like within a short period of time. So, uh, you know, if you have an allergy attack or something like that, like you went to someone's house that had a cat and you didn't know about it and you're allergic and all of a sudden you're just a mess. If you start taking higher doses of curcumin, quercetin, vitamin C, you will start to see improvement right away. In fact, because I am allergic to cats, I take vitamin C in my purse all the time. And if I'm like, oh, you have a cat, take some vitamin C maybe once an hour and I tend to be able to get through it just fine. Um, quercetin is also really helpful for the lungs. It's actually one of the most studied and in fact I think you're going to start seeing quercetin on the market a lot more as a protective substance for lung disease um, because of its tremendous action on so quercetin anywhere 27 milligrams a day. So it's not enough. The therapeutic dose starts at 200 milligrams. So having something in a supplement form um, is probably going to be more therapeutic for you. All right, I'm going to list off a few other phytonutrients. Uh, elderberry, green tea extract or EGCG, which is palmitoyl ethanolamide, PEA is another one, that, which is found in meat, eggs, soybeans, and peanuts. Resveratrol, which comes from the red skins of grapes and is in wine. Unfortunately, it's not enough in wine or we don't encourage drinking that amount of wine in order to get enough, um, but it is super duper powerful as an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. So it's another one, I, that would be my number three. Melatonin, which is the sleeping hormone. A lot of people take it uh, to help them fall asleep and stay asleep at night, but it's also anti-inflammatory, it's powerful. And then N-acetylcysteine, 
um, which is a molecule that is helpful for the lung tissue. So these are all extra ones that you can work with someone to, to put together a good plan for you. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, one other nutrient, and it is not in the family of vitamin, mineral, or phytonutrient. It is a yeast potentate, and uh, it's called Epicor, and that's a patented branded name um, of an ingredient. And uh, the story is really interesting. Um, in the early 1900s, there was a farmer, I believe in Iowa, who raised cattle, and he was feeding his cattle uh, in the winter with the dried hay that he had stored in his um, uh, barn. And I think he was feeding it, and all of a sudden he noticed that there was this black growth on the hay, and he was very concerned because he'd already given a lot of that hay to his cows. Well, the cows survived. They seemed to be great, in fact, and so he didn't worry about it anymore and just continued to feed him the hay. Well, it turned out that his cows did not get sick during that entire winter. Uh, evidently, it was a bad one. Uh, you may have heard of the Spanish flu, which they're comparing this coronavirus to. It is um, an H1N1 flu or um, virus. It's not a coronavirus, so it is different, but a similar pandemic, actually worse, uh, broke out throughout the world and did affect animals too, including pigs and um, other animals. So there was a lot of problems on the farms. And this farmer noticed that his cattle didn't get sick and the other farmers noticed that as well. So they asked him, maybe this black stuff did it. So he started sharing the black stuff. And then a feed company came along and said, hey, we heard about you. Let's test that and see if we can put it into feed. So that's what they did. They tested it. It was safe for the cows and they put it into feed. Fast forward several years, um, the health insurance company that was the provider for this uh, feed company came to the feed company and said, none of your employees get sick. What's your secret? And the feed company is like, I don't know, we make this stuff that helps cows prevent from getting sick. Maybe it's helping us too. So then they started testing in it in humans, found out that it was safe and it worked. And now it is available as this product that is, um, it's in many different products. It's an ingredient. And uh, it has been so helpful for my clients, particularly my older clients who travel a lot and always seem to get sick from the plane. Um, I recommend people take this at the very beginning of flu season, cold and flu season, which I consider to be when people go back to school. Kids, take, bring it home, pass it along. Um, and also ahead of, during, and after any travel. Um, my clients who take it swear by it, and they have had much improved health, and far fewer colds and flu. So that's another favorite of mine. So in general, I'm, I've talked for about a half an hour um, about some of the things that you can do to help you maintain your immune system and, and strengthen it and give it all the nutrients that it needs to perform. So just to review that, uh, we want those five pillars of a good healthy diet and lifestyle foundation. So good blood sugar management by eating frequently and having protein at every meal and snack. Sleep as much as your body needs watch Heather and Rihanna's Facebook post or Facebook live events which are on our Facebook page to get more information about those two areas. Uh, drink plenty of water, not caffeine, but water, tea, herbal teas, plenty of vegetables, tons of vegetables, five cups or more vegetables a day. Um, exercise doesn't have to be hard and running, but something that's daily, get your heart rate up a little bit. And then we talked about supplements. So we talked about vitamins A, C, D, which are all very protective, particularly important for the lungs, which is helpful right now. Uh, zinc, uh, these are minerals. Zinc, selenium, magnesium, iodine, and boron are also all helpful during this time. And then we moved on to the phytonutrients. And my top two, I'll say three, uh, curcumin with the curcuminoid, so with turmeric, quercetin, resveratrol, and then also uh, elderberry, green tea extract like EGCG, um, PEA, and melatonin and NAC. 
And then lastly, EpiCor, which is that yeast potentate that was started by accident with cows. So if you have any other questions or you want to talk about your immune system or helping you stay healthy or recover from COVID, please give us a call or email. Our phone number is 206-853-0534. And our email is admin at starkelnutrition.com. We are doing telehealth appointments. Uh, we can see people across the country uh, within the state of Washington, and we do take insurance in the state of Washington if you're in the state of Washington. I'm not sure if during this uh, rest stay at home period, if we're all able to take insurance from other states. It might have been waived and we allowed to do it during this time, but generally no. Um, and if you have any other questions or if you have any other topics that you'd like us to talk about, please do send in that question. All right, I do see a couple questions. Uh, someone asked for a high quality multivitamin recommendation. Um, I am not going to recommend a specific one because I like to really di deep, deep dive into one into your particular situation before I recommend a vitamin. Uh, however, um, I'm a fan of professional line supplements versus uh, drugstore ones just because the quality is so much better and the form of the vitamin and mineral are actually better used and proven to be better used in the potty. So unfortunately, I don't have a, an across the board recommendation, um, but I'd say talk to someone who knows vitamins, minerals, supplements, has got a deep understanding and a background in nutritional supplements um, to find a good one for you. Uh, Andrew asked, will lowering your pH balance to be more alkaline versus less acid help? Absolutely. Um, and a great way to do that, he mentioned a few things that he does, like lemonade with fresh lemons, warm water. Oh, I see he drinks it with warm water, more vegetables, reduced dairy grains, meat, help. Yeah, those will all help. So when you look at what's, what produces alkaline environment and an, an acid environment in your body, alkaline is produced mostly by vegetables, fruits, mm, lemons, or I guess that would be in fruits, and in general. And then acid or an acidic environment is mostly produced by um, grains to a certain extent. There's some grains that are kind of neutral. Beans, same thing, they're kind of, some of them are kind of neutral. Uh, but meats, sugars, flours, that kind of thing. So if you, if you tend to have your diet that is more vegetables and less meats, which is what it should be, you should be having a really healthy diet alkaline diet. He mentioned also alkaline water. I don't think it's necessary for most people, but if you are in a state where your body needs extra ammo to fight, it might not be a bad thing to have some alkaline water too. Uh, Linda asked, I make a small matcha shot every day. Is that enough green tea extract? I don't know the exact amount of EGCG in matcha, I'm sure you could look it up. Um, it's, you know, matcha is great and we know it has healing properties too. And they're likely, because it is a green tea, it likely has some. I just don't know the amount. Um, and then there was another question. I think this is a question for a future topic. Can you talk about how our supplement needs might change as we get older, particularly women going through or having gone through menopause? Um, yeah, whole other topic. And we'd be happy to talk about that at another time. All right. Uh, oh, we've got one more question. Is liquid the liquid form of vitamin D better than the pill form? Um, not necessarily. It's all about your absorption. So if you have some potential absorption issues, then I would say yes. Um, if you don't, so it's then I'd say probably not a big difference. Um, there are other vitamins that I would say yes to that on. For example, vitamin B12, having it sublingual in a liquid might be better absorbed than if you took it as a pill. But vitamin D is something that we take with food. You know, anytime you take a capsule, the your stomach acid and enzymes have to eat through the capsule outside lining in order to get at the supplement. So yes, you have to have really fully functioning um, digestive enzymes and stomach acid for that to work really well. Um, 
So I guess it might be slightly better, but if you know your digestion is hearty and strong and you're young and you don't have any reason to think that you're, you don't have acid reflux, which is often a indicator of low stomach acid. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it is. Um, then I think you're probably fine with either form. All right. I think that's it. Um, thanks so much. Tune back in next week when Anna is going to talk about disordered eating and eating disorders. I don't know the time yet, but check back in here on Facebook to find out more information. All right. Thanks so much for attending. And if you did attend during our real Facebook Live event at 1230, I apologize again for the sound issues. Hopefully this is better and still delivers most of the information that I talked about then. All right. Thank you so much and have a great day.